Will you choose God's design for sex over your own distortion? All right. Um, you know, you can't talk about relationships and not talk about sex. And um, it's amazing because even this topic, even in church today in 2020 has become so polarizing because everybody in 2020 has their own definition or their own truth around sex. And my intent tonight is not to offend or to judge and make people feel bad. However, if you're a follower of Jesus and you believe in God's word, well, then it is your responsibility to talk about to the designer about the design. In this case, God designed sex, meaning he has a whole lot to say about it. Sex is not dirty. Sex is not bad. Sex is a gift from God. Can I get an amen out there? Somebody bought our friend tonight, they're like, this is such a weird church, man. <laughs> Listen to me. When you misuse the gift, all of a sudden that which is meant to be helpful can become very, very hurtful. See, every gift that God gives us, you'll see this all throughout his word, every gift that God will ever give you is always attached to a boundary. The Bible is full of boundaries, yet the more you get to know God, what you discover is that God's boundaries are not a burden, they're actually a blessing. A, a great way to look at the boundaries of God is to consider guardrails on the freeway. Now, my guess is, is none of you have ever gotten to your car before and started driving on I-95 and said, this is crazy. Why do they have these guardrails on the highway? Can't stand it. No, you're actually thankful for the guardrail because the guardrail, it protects you from oncoming traffic and the guardrail keeps you from going off of the road. This is how God's word operates in the life of, of a believer. God's word protects you and God's word keeps you from walking on the path of life and life more abundantly. It's just how it works. And so God designed sex and according to God's word, God's design for sex is in the confines of a marriage. So you can... Definitely have sex outside of marriage, but it's sort of like driving your car without guardrails. You can do it, but it's dangerous. Sex has a purpose in marriage. I mean, read the Bible. Like, sex has all sorts of purpose. It's for procreation. The first commandment given to Adam and Eve was be fruitful and multiply. Do you know how you multiply? You have sex. <laughs> it's not just for procreation, it's, it's for pleasure, thank God. Turns out if you do it right, it feels good. <laughs> no, nah, that ain't the truth. All right, get out of here, you know. The scripture also says it's for protection. Paul writes to the church in Corinth very, very clearly. And he speaks to married couples and he actually commands them to keep having sex so they won't be tempted and fall away from one another. Sex is a bonding agent for a marriage. In fact, Paul goes as far to say, he says, the only time you shouldn't be having sex is if you're praying. <laughs> so just be like, so what's up? We praying or something? What's up? I mean, <laughs> church on a fast again? What's up, man? Like, okay, it's good. Just, are we praying? All right. Paul actually says to us, to husbands and to wives, that, that your body is not your own, but rather it's, it's given to the other. That we're called to serve each other. We're not called to use one another, but we're called to serve each other. Listen, Dontree can't use me if I'm so busy serving her. You know, guys and girls are different. In fact, let me not say it that way because Don Tree eloquently already said it. It's not guys and girls. I'll just use, Don Tree and I are different. We're just different. You know, like, I'm just, I'm, I don't know. I'm a simple guy, you know? It's like, I don't know what the question is, but the answer is always sex, you know? So. <laughs> not now? Okay. <laughs> not a good time? Okay. Is, it, is now a good time? You're right, you're right, you're right. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. 